morning. Y'all always remind me um, that it's always so fun to come to White Bluff Chapel where everybody's so excited to see each other and we've got so much to say. Even the choir has a hard time getting there on time. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. Look at these beautiful flowers. It is Trisha. Uh, my brain just went blank. Trisha, <laughs> Trisha Scott Shelton's 55th wedding anniversary. Isn't that awesome? It's so fun. Their daughter Valerie's here with them today, and it's just, it's great. Um, I'm just so glad to see you this morning. It's Christmas, and that, isn't this beautiful? Our, our committees came in and our volunteers came in on Tuesday and they cleaned and they put things up. And this doesn't happen with just Randy and Aaron and I. <laughs> Randy and Aaron and I didn't have anything to do with this. This was all volunteers and Kathy Van Wagner just really set the stage. I thank you so much, Kathy. We appreciate it. I was a little bit worried when we saw people on those ladders hanging those wreaths up there, but, but we made it without falling, so it was all good. It was great. It, it was, it's so much fun, and we just appreciate all those volunteers doing that. We have so much going on this week, and so let me kind of give you a rundown. Wednesday night, we've got jazz band. They're going to be here. That's all the kids from Whitney High School. Not all. The jazz band from Whitney High School. So <clears throat> we're going to have like little snack cookies and snacks afterwards. Uh, they eat a lot, so everybody that wants to make something, you are welcome to make something and bring it. Let Mary know. I think she'll be in there for sign-ups, and uh, we'll get organized on that. Also, in the fellowship hall, we still have two, three little angels that need to be adopted, so you can do that. Uh, Kay and Jay will be in there for that. Um, then um, on, on your bulletin, it says that the Tuesday at 2 is meeting on Thursday. That is not correct. Tuesday at 2, we'll meet on Tuesday. <laughs> and we'll be meeting at Marilyn Pollard's house. So uh, if you're part of that, it's still on Tuesday. So I want to make sure you know that. Um, Friday night is our Christmas gathering. And I've mentioned that several weeks. It's where um, you signed up and you go to different people's homes and have snacks, come back here and sing Christmas carols and, and have a dessert. Well, today's the day you get to find out where you're going. So you get to go pick up your invitation in the fellowship hall afterwards. Mary will be in there to help you, or Holly will be in there to help you with all of that. Um, the last thing that's happening this week is next Sunday night, the youth are having pizza and games in the fellowship hall at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. So if you know some teenagers, or if you like to play games, you can come play with the teenagers. I'm sure they would love to see you there. And so we'll be having that at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. Um, I think that's everything. Okay. I'm not hearing anything. So that's a lot going on this week. But um, anyway, Trisha, these, Trisha and Scott, these flowers are just beautiful. 55 years is a long time, and we're, we're, we, uh, we really honor that. You know, in Isaiah 53, 4, it talks about, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We've had a lot of things going on at our chapel, and on Wednesdays we have a prayer time at 930. We also have a prayer time during our Acts 2.42. This past Wednesday night, we started making a list of all the people that were in our sanctuary on Sunday morning that we had been praying for, like uh, with life and death kind of situations or very serious situations. And I think we came up with about eight or nine that truly answered prayers, either uh, from, from health issues over the past six months to a year. And um, we just can't forget that not only did Jesus come to uh, save our sins and take away our sins, but he also came to walk with us through our trials and tribulations. And there is just nothing to take the place of prayer and that communication with Christ. 
and with God. So if you'll bow with me right now. God, we just thank you that we see answered prayers in this chapel, that we see people in this chapel that we have prayed for for weeks and months. And God, we just um, appreciate so much that you are beside us and you're with us. December can be a tough time. Sometimes it brings back a lot of memories that are not always good. God, we just depend on you and seek you during this time. Thank you for this first Sunday of Advent. We glorify and praise you. We worship you and um, are so grateful for all that you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to this first Sunday of Advent. I invite you to stand. Let's all sing together, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus. Remain standing and sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Oh 
The first Sunday of Advent's purple candle signifies hope. The first Sunday of Advent leads our hearts to hope. The purple color symbolizes royalty, repentance, and fasting. This week is a time for us to reflect on what it must have been like to feel the depth of God's silence during the period between the Old and New Testament. It is a time to ponder the prophecies about the promised Messiah. Let us begin the season with a mindset that creates hope in our hearts. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. Good morning. morning. Paula, that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing your gift of music. Choir, you too. Well done. Thank you. It's Christmas season. This month, 
we will continue to focus on God's vision for us, for his body here at White Bluff Chapel. Scripture is quite clear. We are all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. We all need a Savior. God's vision is to provide his salvation through his perfect gift. So if you will read with me these two scriptures, starting in Ephesians 2.8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In Greek, the noun gift, as in gift of God, is derived from the verb gave, which is found in John. He gave. Its usage underscores the free, uncaused, and sacrificial nature of the gift. Some of your translations may read, gift from God. Some of your translations may read, gift of God. The word from would underscore the source of the gift. Of would underscore the pure nature of the gift. So, it's the season of giving. Here's how this is going to work. I am going to give, I'm going to entrust gifts to these young kids. And they will share their gifts with you. This is too good. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, we have uh, the Sonnen family and the Bain family. <laughs> and You're getting some hand-picked gifts there. I want you to know that. <laughs> oh, this is too good. <laughs> you know, we, we make this whole transaction um, somewhat mysterious. But the symbol of God's wisdom is absolutely amazing. He has shared with us the gift of his son, the gift of eternal life through his son. It's a matter of receiving it. So while we conclude this gift giving, let us pray. Out of a humble and grateful heart, Lord, we say thank you for your gift of salvation. In this time of giving gifts to those we love, we pray that we share the good news of the greatest gift of all the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
I would also make mention of the fact that at the bottom of the uh, handout is a reminder to save the date, April 21st, uh, for our <coughs> covenant event. Thank you. Let's give a big hand to our helpers this morning, the Stonings, the Baines. Thank you all. We appreciate them helping out. Well, let's sing together this great hymn called His Name is Wonderful. Let's sing it together. His name. take this quick opportunity to make sure, I know Betty had mentioned it, but just want to make sure you got a, an invitation Wednesday night. We've got the high school jazz band coming here, and I've been asked, how in the world do we schedule, how do we get them on our schedule, the high school jazz band coming to White Bluff Chapel? It turns out I know one of the saxophone players in the band. <laughs> so I worked some of my connections, and uh, we were able to work it out for this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And so be sure to invite all your friends and neighbors. It's a great, great group. And I know you'll be blessed by coming. We'll have some snacks and drinks afterwards. It'll be a great night. Starts right here at 6 o'clock. If you would, let's stand together. Let's sing once again, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness with the liberating light. Praise the One. to suffer in our place. Jesus died and rose for many that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness bearing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory. Praise the one who makes us one. And join me on our last hymn, if you would, this morning. Let's worship and adore him. Let's worship and adore him. Let's worship and adore him. Let's worship.
be seated. Well, we have turned the calendar to December, and Christmas is definitely in the air. Um, again, appreciate all those who were able to come and to, to decorate, and we'll have more and more of the Christmas decorations in the weeks to come as well. Um, what, a, what a great day to come and to worship and to, to praise and, and to glorify our Lord and to be able to come throughout this month to be able to focus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What is your favorite Christmas greeting? I think for most of us, it would be a, a good Merry Christmas, um, much better than a Happy Holidays or, or a Season's Greetings. If, if you look at, at Christmas cards, uh, you may see words like peace on earth and goodwill toward men or Christ the Lord has come or joy to the world or comfort and joy. A Christmas greeting that you may not associate with Christmas are the words, fear not. <laughs> but if you look at the Christmas story and you look throughout scripture, the words, fear not, are predominant. During the next few weeks through the Advent season, our theme will be faith over fear. There's a lot of things that we are fearful of today, aren't there? We live in a fearful world. Our minds are often filled with worries and fears. We fear the instability of our nation's security. We fear what kind of world our children are inheriting. We fear for their future. We, we have personal economic uh, fears. We have fears about our health and the, the health of our children. You, you see, if you, if you look at the history of the world, um, fear is universal. And it may take different shapes and different forms, and yet there is, a, there is a general feeling of fear that can be foreboding, and it can be crippling if we allow it to be. We, we, we look in Scripture, at the time of the birth of Christ, we know that fear abounded. A key message in the first century is that we are truly to have faith, over fear. The, the passages we'll look at in, in, in the next coming weeks, we'll, we'll look at the, the angelic announcements that even brought fear. The story of Zechariah in, in Luke 1, that of he and his, and his wife, the priest his, and his wife were unable to have children because the text said and they were very old, but in the temple, the angel appears suddenly and, and says to Zechariah the priest, fear not. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son, and you will name him John. We hear the story of Mary. The angel appears to her in Nazareth and says, Fear not, you have found favor with God. The story of Joseph and Matthew 1, disturbed because his wife-to-be was pregnant in a dream. An angel appears and says, Fear not. The story of the angels in the field in Luke Two shepherds receiving the birth announcement, and all of a sudden the angel and the angelic chorus, they appear and they say, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. <laughs> and we begin to get the message. Fear not is a Christmas theme. Fear is not only a Christmas theme, it's a, a biblical theme. And if you look at, at the pages of, of the Old Testament, beginning in, in Genesis and, and moving forward, you see those words, uh, to, to fear not, uh, to, to Moses and, and, and to Joshua, and, and the idea of not to be dismayed, not to be fearful, because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Certainly true with the prophets, and specifically the prophet Isaiah Isaiah 7, 4, and I say unto him, take heed and be quiet, fear not, and neither be faint-hearted. Isaiah 35, 4, say to them that are fearful, be strong and fear not. Isaiah 41, for I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto you, fear not, I will help you. Isaiah 43, 5, 
fear not, for I am with you. We continue Isaiah 44 and 54, fear not, fear not, fear not. You see the message that, that our God is, is giving to the, the people back in that day, back in the first century, and certainly today and the days to come. And, and a message that's true and it's addressed to you and, and to me that we are to fear not. <laughs> that there is, a, there is a faith over fear. That when we find ourselves being overwhelmed, whether it's personally or whether we look around and wonder what in the world is going on, that we come back and we know that, that, that we believe in a God who, who loves us with an everlasting love. We know that we believe in a God who is omnipotent and omnipresent, omniscient. He is a God who is, is with us no matter what may occur. So we come to another passage in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, beginning in verse 2. I invite you to turn to that this morning and open God's word as we we look at that the picture as we come to this first Sunday in Advent, that reminder that God is speaking to us in the middle of our need, in the middle of our pain, in the middle of our worries, in the middle of our fears. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Let's stop there just for a moment. The, the hearers are on the edge of their seats. <laughs> the, the people who have walked in darkness, they've seen a great light. And the question is, what will this light look like? What, how will this happen? How will it be revealed? Will it come from lightning bolts from heaven? Will the light shine in wonder and the majesty for all to see? Will the smoke fill the temple and the Messiah miraculously appear? Will the Savior be a great warrior, maybe a, a great political leader? How will this darkness be dispelled? How will our, our fears be addressed? How will the world be made right? We see the answer in verse 6, Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Think about that. There is this incredible picture of the light that will shine in the midst of the darkness of our world. And, and the way in which the light will shine is through a child. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He will be born as a, a baby. Isaiah is repeating what is said over in chapter 7 for those that, that were willing to listen during that day. And he says that, that the child, it will be a child. In fact, the, the, the name, will be, he will be called Emmanuel. He will be called God with us. That there is that picture that, that there will be a day, and, and though there is darkness today, there will be a day in the, in, in, in the future where this child will be born, and it's the, it's the son will be given, and, and this child will be Emmanuel, God with us. You see, the picture is not that we believe in a God who is up there somewhere, we believe that, that Jesus has come to be Emmanuel, that he is God with us. The baby will be called Jesus, meaning Savior. He will be born in a stable in a, in a little town called Bethlehem, the prediction of another prophet named Micah. And, and in, that, in that day, except for the angelic announcement to the shepherds, except for that small group of individuals, there was no big fanfare. There were no big lights. 
there was nothing that was uh, a buzz throughout the, uh, throughout the region that the Messiah had been born, simply a, a, a child born in very humble means. But this child was different than other children. As, as great as a child is that brings hope into our world, this child was different. A child would be born not only the miracle of a birth, but the miracle of the birth of the Messiah. So we see in chapter 9, verse 2, um, in, 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 in following that, that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Don't let that pass you by. Because it's not saying only to the whole world, but you can put your name in there, unto us, unto you, a child is born. It's a, it's a personal gift um, to be given. It, it, isn't it great to see our children here this morning? And they, hopefully everybody got a, got a gift. <laughs> I will say, because I was sitting over here, that um, I got two gifts. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, will, I should say I had two gifts because Larry is sitting there now. <laughs> so, yeah. Which is another sermon illustration that the gift can never be taken away. <laughs> but that's another sermon. Okay. The gift is given. And one of the greatest joys we have is not only to, during the season, um, to be fortunate to receive gifts, but what a joy it is to be able to, to give gifts. And one of the things that we love to do with our angel tree is to be able to give gifts and to, 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 to be able to provide something for, for someone who is in great need. The scripture is speaking of the fact that though there was darkness, and though the darkness was overwhelming, that the light has shined. And as a reminder, as we continue through the Christmas season, as, as, as Betty said a moment ago, that, that, that the Christmas season is a wondrous time of the year, but for many, it's a very difficult time. Maybe there is a loss that you faced this past year. Maybe your life changed because of an event. Maybe maybe there's, there, there's sadness for, for some reason. <laughs> Have you ever had sadness when you wake up in the morning for no apparent reason? It's just like, it's just like the Linus, or the, 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 the Peanuts character that has the cloud over, over him every step of the way. Sometimes we just feel that way. And we wonder even at times, am I truly loved and, and does God himself truly love me? But the promise is this, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. It continues in, in chapter uh, 6 and 7, and the government will be on his shoulders, he will be a wonderful counselor. The original Hebrew, the word wonderful means uh, not of this world. <laughs> it's a wonder of a counselor. The son will be um, an out of this world kind of counselor to his people. He will be called the mighty God. This child, this baby will be born, will be flesh and blood. He will be 100% human. However, this child will also be 100% God. It's not very good math, but it's great theology. He is both God and man, human and divine. The mighty God expresses his divine nature and his supreme strength. He is the mighty God. He is the, the name above all names. Because Jesus, the Savior, Emmanuel, is, is mighty God. It, it means that when we say don't fear, that we don't say somehow in a glib way, 
don't worry, be happy. It'll probably work out. <laughs> Instead, it's, it's the statement of history of saying that, that God has become flesh. He is Emmanuel. It goes back to the, 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 the promise to, to, to Joshua to be strong and courageous. Do not be fearful, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So that means not that we won't face problems and, and face illness and, and, and issues and difficulties. It means that in the midst of it all, that we have a God who is with us. He truly is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting Father. Isaiah's light is the everlasting Father over all his children, and his rule is based on divine love and care. He is the Prince of Peace. And of all the names and titles the child is given, the hardest to see, perhaps, is to, and to experience may be the idea of the prince of peace. How do we have the prince of peace in the midst of our crazy, fragmented world? Again, in, in the original language, the word for peace literally means to tie up loose ends together into the whole. <clears throat> to tie up loose ends together in the whole. To, to bring peace by taking these bits and pieces of our lives and, and, and weaving them together into something beautiful. That, that Jesus, the, the Messiah, is the great weaver and creates things in our world that even in the midst of all the fragmented odds and ends of life, that he, he, he brings all those things together. That, that Jesus truly is the grand weaver. He promises that the Messiah would rule over our world, not in a, in a way that presents all harms, but that, that brings those pieces together. He truly is a gift from God. In fact, in verse 7, it says, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. <laughs> so if you're wondering this morning, Pastor, thank you for talking about fear, but you don't know what kind of fears I'm facing. You don't know what I'm going through. That may be true. But I do know this, is that our God does know. And he is able to, to work and to weave and to bring peace through us, not because we sit here at the White Bluff Chapel in, in every other church in our community and throughout the world saying that, that Jesus is our hope. Rather, it's because of what God's word says. And we could stand upon the truth of the word of God. The, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. So as we, we look back, we reflect upon those words. But as we sit here today, we can say the zeal of the Lord has accomplished this. Isaiah says, you look ahead, there will be one day a baby who will be born. This baby is like no other. The baby will grow and will change the world. Yes, the light will shine. Yes, the darkness will be dispelled. Yes, the baby will change the world. The baby will change our lives and our thoughts and our attitudes, our relationships, our, our paths. The baby will not only change our family or community for a certain period of time, but for all eternity. We look back at the promises today. We look back as we, we, we come to a time of that first advent and reflect upon those prophecies. The one who has brought light to a darkened world. The one who knows our fears. The one who allows us through God to put faith over fear. I invite you to bow your heads as we have a time of reflection. And in preparation for the taking of, of communion this morning, to reflect upon the gift that we have, the light that shines, the knowledge of him, the, the baby who has changed the world, through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Jesus and comforting his disciples in the, the last week of, of his life here on earth. And he says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> Sound familiar? Don't, don't be fearful. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to where I am. And, and there you will be as well. Thomas, one of the disciples, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. And Jesus simply says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father but by me. May that be a reminder for us as we take time to reflect upon our lives as we um, participate in this communion and to be able to be mindful that because of what Christ has done for us, the fact that, that, that the baby grew to, to be the one to provide that sacrifice, that we don't need to fear because we have the presence of the Lord with us no matter where we are. Let's bow our heads once more as we pray. Father, we, we, got, we pray, Lord, as you, as you guide us as we prepare for these moments to partake of, of, of your communion. And, Lord, to be mindful that even in the midst of all the uncertainties of our lives, Lord, that you are not only close, but, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you are within us, giving us the strength that we need. We pray these things in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord that which I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward at this time.
Jesus said, this is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat, do so in remembrance of me. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let's bow our heads together as we pray. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather this morning, Lord, to be mindful of the great gift that we have. Father, as we continue through this 
Christmas season, Father, we pray that we can see you in a fresh way, in a new way. And Lord, just as um, new life brings a new understanding, Father, help us to be mindful of the, uh, the gift of, uh, of a son, Lord, of a savior. Father, help us also to, to know that when we think of the, the, the cradle, that we think of the cross, and, and that, that we are, are mindful of the great sacrifice that was given for us, that we could have light within the darkness of our world, and Lord, that we can be ambassadors of that light, to share the good news. Father, help us to be faithful in the, the work that we do. Father, guide us as we continue to, to grow individually within our own personal lives, Lord, as we know the value of prayer, and Lord, as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's good to see each of you this morning as we've come to worship and to, to take time to reflect upon the blessings of our Lord. May we always be mindful of those around us and as we, we share the good news to a world in need. Let me also remind you that just as every, every Sunday we have the opportunity to pray and if you'd like to come forward in the first couple of rows and uh, just to take some time to pray, that would be, that'd be great to be able to reflect upon the Lord. And also a reminder, we have a fellowship between our services. So one of the great things about coming to the first service is you get like a cookie and coffee or whatever's over there. So invite you to stay and, and to visit with folks, maybe meet somebody that you, you don't, don't know and be, be able to get to know them. But may the blessings of the Lord be upon each of you as we continue to, to be the people of faith that God has called us to be.